are here at Facebook Live, Jan Jensen Artists. And we're here in the Northland, iWorks, North Kansas City, um, where we talk about all things art, artists, and a little bit about uh, cocktails, mocktails, hot tea, whatever. And I'm really excited tonight to have Carnez Williams as our guest. We're doing a, a whole different kind of um, interview tonight about art and protecting your art and your collectibles, things that sometimes those of us who are more right-brained and just love the, the fun of it all don't always take care of some of these little details. So first of all, Carnez, welcome, glad you're here. Thank you, Jen, I'm so happy to be here. So when I interview artists, and by the way, Carnez is an artist, so he has that two-way brain. Yeah. yeah. Two -way it's actually my piece here behind me, so. I know, I love it. Scoot out of the way a little bit so that we can see. Okay. Can you see it? Interesting, interesting. <laughs> a lot of texture. Yes, uh, plaster and, and knock, wall knockdown, you know, which kind of gives you that little um, bit of a of, of kind of like an eggshell, you know, um, yes. coating to it. But then there's some uh, there's a matte finish, and then a little bit of a of a gloss finish. So yeah, just wanted to kind of explore a few different uh, methods in in this piece here behind me. So great, I love it. I'm excited Thank to you. see up close and in person. So where were you when you were 12? Who were you when you were 12? Oh, wow. Who was I when I was 12? Oh, man. Okay, so um, born and raised in Wichita, Kansas. That's uh, likely where I was somewhere in Wichita, you know, kick, kicking around uh, doing something. Um, but, you know, at that time, um, kind of like I am now, like I was always interested in art and uh, kind of visual stimulation. And so, um, like I was kind of sharing with you a little bit earlier, um, you know, my parents always encouraged me to kind of go do something professional, be someone professional. But at the same time, you know, they would turn around and then they give me a paint set you know, or some kind of like some kind of artist, you know, um, uh, gift of some kind, you know, paints or, or paint brushes or canvases or, you know, whatever. And so um, I, I did a lot of like drawing and painting and whatnot, you know, growing up and uh, piecing together um, like model cars and things like that. So kind of that, uh, I guess that was part of that, that, that left brain, if you will. Um, yeah. Doing that but um, uh, a mixture of the left brain and right brain. But yeah, just kind of doing, doing a lot of creative things. Um, you know, we come from a big family. So, you know, spend a lot of time with, with uh, cousins and, you know, aunts and uncles and things. And so uh, just kind of, you know, kicking around Wichita and, and doing, doing some creative things and just having a blast, so. So you are not the only person whose family said, hmm, I, you probably ought to get a real job first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Then you can kind of do the art as, and in fact, it's amazing how many artists w wait until later in life to really explore their artistic bent. And it's fun. It's, yeah. Our, our parents are just watching out for us. They just want to make sure we can make Absolutely. Them. Absolutely. Well, the funny part is, you know, both my parents are fairly creative. I mean, my, my mother you know, was, was a very big, she's big on um, kind of drawing and whatnot. And so any, anytime I had to create a project, she would sort of work on something like work on things with me. Uh, and then my dad is also uh, a pretty big artist himself. He would, you know, kind of um, do a lot of like spray painting, you know, kind of, and, and etchings and things, um, you know, painting car, he, uh, him and my uncle and grandfather would put together um, kind of like race cars and things. And so they would paint the race cars, paint the size of the race cars with, you know, either murals or, you know, etching drawings or whatnot. And so, um, so I, strangely enough, they're both fairly creative, but, you know, always encouraged me to go do something professional. So I feel like now I, I'm able to kind of please everyone because I'm, I'm doing something professional, I, at least I, I think, and, and also feeding that creative side of myself as well. So well, let's go ahead and start. You have a delightful slideshow ready. Thank you. Share yeah. with us. Let's use that as a basis to kind of continue our conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And so kind of, the, you know, to the point of our of our discussion, um, you know, where where does art and and uh, insurance and risk management sort of meet? So um, I'm going to do a presentation view here. Can everyone see that? Can you see that? OK. Yep. Looks good. OK, excellent. 
so I use a little bit of an Aaron Douglas background there. Aaron Douglas is a, uh, a Kansas artist, a uh, black Kansas artist. And so I thought I'd, you know, give it, give a little nod to my home, home state, as well as, you know, um, kind of spotlight a black artist uh, as well, uh, who's kind of part of that uh, Harlem Renaissance and, and Renaissance movement in black art. So, um, so ensuring your art, uh, just some considerations and things to think about when doing so. Uh, again, a little bit uh, about me. I am an insurance broker, uh, meaning I shop with any number of different carriers uh, for home, auto, personal insurance, um, as well as uh, some small um, commercial insurance, small business owners insurance with a company called IMA Select. Um, I'm actually missing the LLC there, but it's IMA Select LLC. <laughs> uh, again, it's more fun to look at you than the LLC. Okay, okay. that's great. Um, Thought I'd get a little creative here with this image. I um, see that. I know that headshot. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I was like, oh, it's kind of boring if I just use the same thing, right? You got to jazz it up a little there. bit, make it fun. You did it. You did it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, from Wichita, Kansas, born and raised, KCK resident, currently uh, art and antiques lover. As I was sharing with you, I kind of rummage through the antique stores on the weekend when I have some free time. Um, something I absolutely love to do. So um, if you have any, if anyone has any recommendations on places I should go, let me know. Um, right. always happy to, we'll always we'll happy put to it out for the people who are watching us too. Okay, yes, thank you. Uh, KU Journalism undergrad, woo -woo. shout out to my Jayhawks, uh, yeah. Indiana Law uh, graduate as of 2013. And I've been working in the insurance industry, in and around the insurance industry um, since, since I graduated, so. Um, started out with a pretty big company uh, doing uh, claims and then moved or claims slash litigation management, uh, worked in compliance, and then before moving into um, insurance brokerage as of as of the last few years. So, well, and when did you when did the art thing become? Because that's kind of one of your specialties. If we're if we're in Kansas City and want to talk about, the, yeah, folks, we're not doing this as a plug necessarily for his business. So, what oh, we're, sure. Yeah, first, and he and he knows that, but we are doing it just to get some ideas about things we should know and consider. But so when, I mean, this is perfect for you to be in art insurance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm kind of more person, you know, generally property casualty insurance, but my specialty within that and the, the area that, you know, I sort of am... Um, expanding my knowledge in is the arts um, and collectible sort of piece. Of thing. So um, high net worth, um, you know, or I should say successful professionals who, you know, are able to, you know, kind of have some, some more um, or access to like art and collectibles and, and antiques, things like that. You know, what do you, what do you do with that? You know, how do you ensure those things and, and protect them uh, you know, for, for many years to come? you know, in the event of any kind of a loss. And so that's right. kind of, those are the things that we really think about sort of in, in my piece of the, of the business within personal, uh, personal insurance. Well, and then I'm thinking about all my artist friends who have so much art in their homes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, and, well, and hanging at other venues. So hopefully you can give us some insight onto what we should be doing with that. Most definitely, I will certainly do my best. <laughs> Um, so one of the things I wanted to, to share with you is sort of uh, five considerations for ensuring your art. Um, you know, being that I'm coming from a personal line standpoint, uh, which is kind of your home, auto, things like that, um, you know, these are things that you want to think about in terms of, you know, what, what the coverages are uh, through your, you know, your home, your renters, your condo insurance, things like that, you know, and, and whether or not your, your pieces are covered um, at all. And if so, what kind of coverage do you have? Um, and then within that, if, you're, you know, if your art is lost, uh, stolen, you, know, you wanna make sure that you replace that, that art and sort of what, what does that look like? What are your options in that space? Um, and then you know, uh, the, th the third piece of it being, you know, if you have the right type of coverage, um, you, can, you have some other options kind of just beyond, um, you know, just, just giving you a, um, you know, a payout for whether or not it's this item is lost or stolen you know if there's some damage right. that occurs to that piece um you have more than just a just a cash out option you know there are options for repairing um replacing um you know other other options than just sort of your your traditional coverages under um a property or casualty uh, policy 
Um, and then, you know, kind of like you were talking about, you know, if you are an artist and you are transporting, you know, pieces sort of back and forth between, you know, your, your studio and, and a, um, a gallery or a museum, things like that, you know, what, what does that look like to, to cover your art sort of in transit? Like what, what should you be considering and what should you discuss with your broker or agent to make sure that that's covered? So, um, and then, you know, within the business of insurance, there are many other coverages that you can consider. I'll kind of touch on that a little more briefly um, because that could be a whole conversation in and of itself. But, you know, um, just give you some, to give you some things to think about, uh, this is kind of where, um, where I'll start, so. Cool. Okay. All right, so the first item will be, um, you know, so what happens with, with your homeowners? Okay, let's see, there we go. Click, okay. And this is the, um, this is just kind of a, an item discussing like trends in art sales. Um, one of the things that you really wanna think about um, if you are a collector is the value of your art, right? That's one of the main things you'll have to, you know, sort of, Establish with your with the carry the insurance carrier. Make sure that you are insuring against properly, um, you know, with any loss or anything like that. And so, you know, it's important to kind of kind of keep watch of the trends. You know, so if you have pieces that kind of fall into, for example, this post war and or contemporary um, category, you know, chances are pretty good they've got it's gone up in value. And this is something that you'll want to be mindful of um, in establishing the pro, you know sort of either the provenance or the value of your piece. Um, documentation is very important when ensuring any, any type of art. So um, you know, knowing, knowing what the, the market trends are and you know, what, the, what, the, um, you know, what the sale value is on that is, is um, very important for establishing the, um, the coverage amount on your, um, on your insurance. Cool. Uh, and so kind of moving along, um, thing that you want to make sure that you understand is that your homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance, condo insurance, et cetera, um, may not cover your art. Um, so typically within homeowner's insurance, personal property is something that co covers the, um, the personal items in your home, you know, your, your furniture, your, you know, your, your decorative items, your, um, your, you know, electric, electrical um, um, items, et cetera. But a lot of times those coverages are very limited with homeowner's insurance, you know, typically for, um, valuable articles or art, fine art, jewelry, things like that, there's a limit um, anywhere from $1,000 to 2,500. And so, you know, that's, and that's it. And there's a deductible on top of that. So, you know, that's very limited coverage and that's just not enough for, for most people who have, you know, several works of art in their home um, that is valued, you know, at X amount um, over and above that 2,500. Um, and so you'll want to look at what's called um, some people call it a personal articles floater. Um, I call it a valuable articles floater uh, or endorsement. And that's something that's in addition to your, your property coverage. That's something that's going to provide you with those higher limits. Um, typically, there's no deductible with those, but that's not always the case. You definitely want to ask about that with your broker um, or, your, or your agent. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that's going to give you a little bit higher coverage, you know, over and above, again, that, that um, that range of $1,000 of $2, to $2,500 um, in, in coverage limits. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you, A, establish the, the value like we talked about. Um, and I'm kind of going a little bit out of order here. So if I jump down to this. this um, so we're supposed to make sure that it's not stolen. Is that what that means? What's that? We're supposed to make sure that our art isn't stolen. You, you know. Or information. What is Yes, I mean you want to make sure that you are not acquiring art that is was acquired. Um, irres I shouldn't say yours. Yeah, irresponsibly or unethically right. or illegally. I mean, I I believe responsible art acquisition matters, and it's important to make sure that you're not, you know, bringing on something, you know, purchasing something that has, um, hmm, how do you say, um, sort of a a tainted past. Yeah, right, <laughs> you and that happens people. not only to people but to uh, galleries. The you galleries. I get in trouble with that because, yeah. You, oops. Oh, absolutely. I mean, establishing provenance and in, in sort of a, a track record or a, um, a paper trail is very important, you know, to the value. But, you know, should you run into and sort of to insure against that, and I'll touch on this very briefly because I don't offer this type of insurance. It's something that, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not even, I don't think I'm licensed to offer, but, you know, I, I touch on it because it's something you'll want to inquire about. 
um, generally. And so title insurance is, some, is a, a type of insurance that sort of protects against um, kind of your, your more adverse purchases uh, in the event that you do acquire art that is um, illegally or unethically obtained, um, you'll at least be, you know, should be protected against the value of your purchase. And so that's something that you'll definitely want to, to inquire about, um, you know, just, just as a responsible art owner and, and a protector of your, uh, of your artwork. So you want to make sure that, again, you ask about that. So, okay. um, all right, again, um, just kind of, just, you know, going yep. into a little bit more detail, here's some of the coverages that we've kind of already talked about. Um, one thing I didn't, and I think I, perhaps I mentioned is that, you know, an appraisal is required with that personal, uh, personal uh, or valuable articles floater. Um, you know, they'll, the carriers will want to see that in order to make sure that they're establishing the appropriate amount of coverage. Some exceptions apply. Some of your higher, what we call higher net worth carriers will give you an exception for works that are valued at 250 to and below. Um, but your that means your coverage um, on your, uh, the replacement coverage on your home needs to be anywhere from 500,000, valued at 500,000 replacement costs and above. Um, okay. so, so some carriers like, you know, like Chubb, for example, you know, or Pure or Nationwide Private Client will provide you with, um, or they will require, excuse me, a higher coverage A dwelling replacement limit in order to, um, to, to kind of give you some of these um, sort of fringe coverages on your, uh, for your art and to protect your art and then provide exceptions for things like uh, appraisals um, below a certain amount. So um, always review your exclusions, conditions, um, and valuations clauses. These are the things that are going to tell you what happens in the event of a loss. Um, I won't go into too much detail because we could be here all day. <laughs> right, yep. <laughs> right. Uh, but, lots of, <laughs> but lots of options through your carriers. Um, and if you'll notice too, I kind of, as we move through the slides, um, I, I give you uh, a little information on the art that appears in the- Oh, I love that. As well. So in case anyone's interested, um, as I was kind of browsing for work, for artwork to include in my, my presentation, I was like, oh, wow, these are really amazing. Um, why not spotlight the, the artists and, and give them sure. you know, their, their just um, uh, recognition? So, okay. Yep. Thanks for doing that. Of course. Of course. Very important to me. All right. I'm going to move this little guy here. Yeah. So, um, again, if your art is lost or stolen, um, don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't make sure your art make sure your art doesn't get lost or stolen. <laughs> the best you can. <laughs> um, but here's some payout options or some loss settlement uh, options, as we call it. Um, fair market value, you know, Christie's, Sotheby's, et cetera. What does it look like if those items are sold at auction um, within a reasonable amount of time and for the market uh, value? Um, stated or agreed value. Stated value is going to be, you know. Hey, my my work is or my piece is worth this amount. Um, up to the care the insured to determine that and to prove that. Uh, agreed value. Typically, they're going to have an expert. Carriers will have an expert come in, work with you on that. Uh, let me know if I'm moving too fast or if anyone has questions. I kind of I kind of talk a little fast sometimes, so let me know and I'll, <laughs> I'll slow things down. I'm, so I'm chuckling watching the uh, the captions. They are flying on the bottom of, of the. Oh, Oh, really? Okay. Hopefully that's good. Keeping up with you. So let's talk. Um, there really are a number of different levels of concern, I guess. So there is the new uh, collector, the young collector, who or okay. just anybody who is starting a collection. Okay. So at what point do they contact their insurance person? Let's say they have a few pieces that are in the $2,500 range. At what point do they call their insurance guy and say, okay, I, this is what I have, what do I do? Um, I mean, you know, if, if they feel that they have enough coverage within the, that, you know, 1,000 to 2,500 range or, you know, whatever that is with that particular carrier, um, you know, they, they may be fine, but I think it's always worth having that conversation. I mean, I, I don't think that as the consumer or I, I don't, I would always reach out to the, the care, the, excuse me, the, um, the agent or the broker, you know, just to confirm that I have the appropriate coverage. I, I think that's always best. You know, okay. I, I, I think it's best to 
err on the side of, you know, not knowing enough than assuming, you, you know, you kind of know or have all the, the knowledge that you need. Always best to ask, right? So that's kind of the, the stance that I take. So what about the artist who just loves to create and has many, I mean, I can think of many of my artist friends who have many, many works in their homes. They have maybe not been sold yet. How do you, how does one figure out the value and what does an insurance, you know, we put a price on something. Okay, help me out here. Well, yeah, I think, um, so one of the things we do, it, you know, or we sort of have access to, um, at least on the brokerage side is, you know, through some of our higher network carriers and, and through some of the insurance companies is um, access to like a, like appraisal, um, appraisal houses or appraisal connections or, you know, and, and even if, you know, perhaps your broker or agent doesn't have access to, to those sort of connections, um, I mean, reach out to an appraisal house yourself, you know, and, and say, hey, you know, I, I have these works, you know, what, what would you, what would you say these are worth in, in a fair, you know, fair market or, you know, in the current market, you know, and it, it just kind of depends. I mean, certain types of, of works sort of vary depending on, I mean, they, you know, it kind of ebbs and flows, right? I mean, there's a, you know, on the base, kind of based on the demand is, is, you know, my understanding of it. And so um, I, I would reach out and, and seek guidance on, on the, on the value through an appraiser. So does an artist have to be famous before they, and what does famous mean? Huh, um, not that putting you on the spot. Oh, no, that's, is that one of the questions that came through? No, it came out of my brain. My oh, okay. okay, no, no, that's great. That's a great question. Um, I, I don't think, I would probably consult uh, an appraiser and, and get more information on that. Um, I don't have, as, you know, I, I'm not myself an appraiser, so, and I'm not licensed to be, to appraise anything. And so I, I couldn't give you, a, you know, a, a straight up answer on that. But what I, what I say is if you, you know, feel that there's value in your, well, you, everyone, you should feel that there's value in your work, sure. um, reach out to an appraiser and, and say, you know, Hey, what would, what would this go for? You know, or, you know, can you help me find a market for this? Cause I think that's a, that's one of the things that they do as well is right. help you find help you find a market for your work and that will tell you you know a lot of times in probably in comparison to you know work within a certain genre like what your what your pieces are worth and then from there you can get you know whatever certification or, or you know written documentation kind of verifying that um, that you need to uh, likely through an appraiser um, and, and, then, and then kind of go from there but I, I mean I again I'm not a licensed appraiser but I think it's something that you could definitely, you know, discuss with an appraiser to get more information on and then kind of follow up with an insurance carrier from, or a broker or agent from there. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of the best, I think the best way to go about that. And I have found- That's what with, I would do. <laughs> and I have found with, and visiting with appraisers that they are very uh, willing to help. They're very, I think sometimes both, the general public who is starting out as as collectors and even artists um, don't think that they have enough or that are you know to go into an appraiser and say let's talk about what I or I you know this too just the idea that somebody's going to tell you what your work is worth or not I mean any artist any creator is putting it out there on the line and yeah you have to be thick skinned and strong. Yes, be very much so. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and some of the, some as worse, many of these uh, artists who, you know, came, many artists who came before us and, and, you know, had to establish uh, on some level their, their work to, to um, the public and, and um, potential buyers and things like that. I mean, you know, there was something that there was something that they were able to demonstrate or show. Right. Um, in terms of proficiency or uh, in order to, in order to gain an audience and, and thus buyers. And so, um, you know, I would even, I would even ask an appraiser, Hey, you know, what do I, you know, what kind of establishes that, that sort of provenance, you know, and that's, um, and, and or research it. I mean, those are, those are great questions to, to ask and to, to look into a little bit further. Um, I mean, I, again, I'm not an appraiser. I'm not licensed to be an appraiser. I couldn't tell you, 
you know, exactly what goes into that. You know, it's kind of like, um, like the actuaries on the back end of, of right. you know, the insurance company, like how do they, how they decide the rates? I could not tell you that. That's yeah. like, yeah, that's, you know, a- that's like sausage being made behind the scenes. I couldn't <laughs> tell you. <laughs> we don't want to know. So and I don't want to know. What else do you have for us? Um, oh, look, we're only on the second slide. We're going to have to scoot on through this. Oh, that's no, okay. Um, first of all, let's talk about the art. Yeah, these are some really great pieces. Um, I was looking on a site called Artsy, and they were sort of um, talking about, I see their posts all the time on like yes. LinkedIn and things. And uh, they had some really great pieces on, um, actually it was a post that I saw uh, that was talking about, you know, all these um, like uh, sort of a surgeon sort of these black artists, like and not just artists, but like collectors and um, like curators and things. And so there was a piece on a woman who, and I forget her name, I'm, I'm I apologize, but she had collected and amassed all these amazing works of art. And so many of these pieces are kind of like from her collection. So oh. um, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, oh, okay, yep, that I want to display that, put that one on the on the PowerPoint. Yes, please. So um, sure. yeah, yeah. And uh, I, s- I see something here that it, it is pertinent to a lot of artists because many of them do uh, ship their works. Okay. So, then in the shipping that I have done, you kind of have to decide what, how much responsibility you want to take or if you're shipping it through someone else. Talk, can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, I sure can. Um, so yeah, so one of the things that is, is pertinent to artists who are sort of shipping, shipping their works or displaying their works in you know, a gallery or you know, a museum um, is what we call inland marine coverage. And that covers art sort of in transit, sort of to and from, um, you know, this coming to studio to the, to the the museum or the gallery. Right. I mean, these are these are you know this is coverage that you know kind of protects you for those sort of unforeseen <laughs> things that can happen. You know, right. um, things are are damaged or you know are or lost or you know whatever the case may be. Um, you know, but because typically you're either your homeowners or uh, whatever your property coverage is, is going to going to exclude works in transit, and so this is a separate coverage, separate policy that you would then need to uh, to purchase. Um, and so, you know, definitely something to to check in with, with your broker about. Um, ask them, you know, sort of um, h- how much you would need, and and you know, and all of that. But but yeah, this is definitely a coverage that will protect you, sort of, uh, kind of on on the protect your works um, on the go and, and in transit, so. Inter- interesting, majority of the losses occur in transit. Hmm. Yes, that, that is what I've read over and over again, the majority of, of losses, and by losses we mean not like work that's, you know, lost, like you can't find it, right, right. But, da- but damage. And so a lot of times when we, when we use that term uh, loss in insurance, it means some sort of, um, some sort of, um, event that will will either depreciate the work damage or yeah. or or damage the work somehow or you know thing, things kind of along those lines so some kind of uh, loss event if you will some sort so, of peril. and those of you who have been watching us know that this is a, one of Hugo's works and you have seen yeah. Hugo's work uh, and seen an interview with him so Carnes you saw this piece in person, tell us a little more about it. Oh man, I mean, it, it's really, um, it's really mesmerizing in person. I mean, you know, it's here. It's only two D, right? You can only right. see, you know, two dimension or one dimension of it, really. Right. And, and so, um, seeing it, you know, live in the flesh, three D. I mean, it, it's it's amazing. You know, there's there, you don't get the full scope of it. Um, is is what I'm saying, and it's it's really amazing to see kind so of is how. It a- is it a bass, a cello? What what is the instrument? I believe this is, uh, and I don't want to. I don't want to misspeak. Um, no, I'm a musician, and we're both m- misspeaking, yeah. so it's all good. <laughs> okay, um, I, I honestly don't recall. I don't recall. Um, How big was it? Gosh, <laughs> I like is it a stand up? Is it a piece that you could stand up beside? Yeah, I, I I don't know if it's it's one you could stand up beside. I think it was on a like a bass of some kind. Uh, okay. That kind of that propped it up a little bit. 
So maybe something smaller than a cello, because um, the cello is a big one that stand that like kind of, you know, pretty you much stands sit and play. And then the bass is the one you stand up and play. Okay. Oh, yeah. go so it's you're watching. I'm so sorry. We are doing this to your piece. <laughs> Um, so, so most likely a, a cello, but again, I, I, I won't, I, I don't want to, uh, to diminish the, the work in, in, in full or in its entirety or, or anything like that. So, but, um, but yeah, it, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty grand, um, at whatever stature. You know. Right. Right. All right. So we have a, you have a bit more for us. Um, let's see. I believe that was pretty much. Yeah. Oh, so the, the last thing, you know, in terms of um, coverages is you want to think about if you are um, an artist or someone who sort of is, is in the business of art, you know, you want to make sure that you look at um, any any number or any combination of, of the following um, art insurance coverages or policies as they pertain to you and your business. So, you know, business owner coverage, um, covering the, the property, uh, the, any property damage, um, liability. Uh, or excuse me, property property being like business property, anything that you know you use to sort of um, uh, create your art or um, propel your business or you know, operate your business, uh, liability insurance, you know, um, any any anything you become legally liable for, uh, loss of income, um, you know, due to any any of the you know, given perils oh, yeah. or mm -hmm. you know, and and I'm not sure how that works as, um, and I shouldn't say I'm not sure how that works, but like you, you definitely want to check with how that's going to work with um, with art coverage. I mean, typically, um, you know, that's that's something that um, you'll you'll want to investigate a little more and, and make sure that your your specific type of business will um, will will qualify for a loss of income. I know um, a lot of people um, request that or, or seek that out, but you know, there there are a lot of there are quite a few limitations, I believe, on the, on that particular aspect of it. So you want to make sure that you check in with your broker. Um, and then professional liability, you know, if a lot of times if you are, you know, taking commissions or have some sort of contractual agreement, you know, you want to make sure that you, um, in, in any event that you aren't able to fulfill that, you know, sometimes loss claim, loss, oh. losses or claims come out of that. And so you want to make sure that you have coverage for that as well. Like um, the painting, what was the most recent one? And again, those of you who are listening know more than I, but the painting, the commission and the guy gave them two blank. Oh, yes, I yeah. saw that. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. It was, was probably like, there is more conversation about that. Those two blank canvases than there might have been if he had done a whole work. Let's go down to okay. cyber insurance. We were. Yeah. What is, what is, talk to me about what that is. Uh, so cyber coverage is going to, you know, cover you for um, in the event there's like a a, a, brief, a data breach or in the event that you know you are um, like hacked online or you know that there's there's some sort of a um, you know over generally kind of a, a, a breach of your of your information online um, and so you want to make sure that you have coverage for that because there that is such a that's an issue that's coming up more and more I mean right. there, are, there are lots of people that are you know they're having their data um, Know, hacked and or um, ransomed from them, you know, for example, if you have a bunch of information online, you know, credit card information or, you know, financial information, if you're doing any kind of, you know, uh, financial or sense using um, financial or sensitive information uh, online, um, you know, a lot of times, I shouldn't say a lot of times, but there, there have been in many instances where hackers will get in, they'll get that information, and then they will keep it from you unless you pay them a certain amount. Right, right. You know, rant, so ransomware, you malware, things like that. And so this, this type of coverage will typically kick in, um, you know, up to a certain amount in the event that something like that happens. So so as an artist, you are, are we talking about um, information that we collect from clients when we sell things? That's, you know, that's something that you would need to you know, definitely check in with your broker about, um, but, you know, I'm just kind of giving you just kind of general things to think about, but that, that is, that would likely fall with, you know, fall within the coverage. And that, again, that's something that you would need to confirm and check on with your broker, but that's something that, you know, generally kind of falls within that scope of cyber coverage. So. Well, I was having a conversation with uh, an artist friend the other night and 
he oftentimes puts his name across any images of his works if he's going to put them on Facebook or online any place so that they can't be, which for me, because I want them to look pretty when I post them on for something, but, but he has a point. Do you, can you speak to that, to art being stolen uh, off the internet? Do, oh, do you mean like, um, uh, like, kind of like um, gosh, how can you say that? I mean, like, like copyright infringement or um, yeah. something like something along those lines. Um, like downloading something that's on there and then making it their own and selling it. You know, that's a, that's a really good question. And that's something that I would probably need to look a little bit more into. Um, I, I, you know, generally I, I believe these covers. So my understanding is that these covers are kind of more for, you know, like your, your yeah. actions or things that you become legally liable right. for, et cetera. Um, and then there's some, you know, if that causes any kind of like loss of income, you know, that's something that you would look at through your business owner policy, but um, in terms of others sort of stealing your work, um, that would probably require a bit more investigation. So let me follow up with you on that. Let me let me check into that a little bit more um, and, and see what I can come up with. So Great. thanks. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, what a delightful, I mean, who knew that you could make insurance this pretty? I'm just going <laughs> to give you credit for that. We really appreciate it. And uh, we either have people watching who are totally on board with, okay, I'm gonna check into this and see what I have, or whose stomachs are in roiling. I love that word, roiling, because they're thinking, oh my gosh, do I need, to, what have I done, what have I done? Oh, and some people, yeah. you know, are just going, huh, all right, I'll think about that tomorrow, so. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. I mean, it's, it's, you know, these are just considerations. There's no, I'm, you know, obviously, and I, I need to make sure I establish this too, you know, I'm not giving any full and complete or, or any kind of, um, specific in insurance advice. These are just considerations, things to think about. You know, I'm no one's agent here, or broker here, no one's lawyer or attorney. You sure. know, these are just things that, you know, um, that come up <laughs> when, right. you're, when you're looking at, you know, art and, and insurance with whether you're looking at it from, you know, a property and casualty standpoint, you know, on your, on your homeowners, renters, condo, or if you're a business owner, these are things that you want to, you want to you know, kind of think about. Um, you know, again, I, I, I kind of specialize a little bit more on the personal lines, the home and auto and, and things like that, and, and ensuring your, your works through your, through your homeowners or your, per, you know, um, uh, valuable or personal article, articles flutter through, or in addition to your homeowners or uh, property casualty coverage. But, you know, um, I always work closely with our, um, our small business team, small business insurance team to really make sure that we provide the most, um, narrowly tailored coverage, you know, for your business. So that's something that we could, you know, sit down and talk about. I, I think the best thing a broker can do for you is listen, you know, listen yep. to you learn about who you are, what your business is, you know, what your, what kind of, how, how you want to uh, ensure your works, you know, what you really value, and then take that and turn that into the most appropriate and protective coverage for you possible. So. Well, thanks. So let's stop screen sharing so we can get up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there, I look at um, an up close and personal look at you before we leave. And thanks so much. It's what fun. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, we have talked. We're looking forward to seeing you at some of our art events and meeting Most some definitely. of these artists that uh, could probably should all, should think about this stuff. And yeah, absolutely. Like, we uh, Carnes is a, a resource. We're not in any by any means saying that you should go to him and that they should be, but it's just so much fun to, to meet this guy and to find out that he has this whole art side of his brain and look, can look at both sides of things. Absolutely. Most definitely. I mean, I, I think, you know, for me, I understand sort of the, I won't call it emotion, but you know, how important it is to protect what you've created and or what you've acquired and, you know, collecting and, you know, pack collectors are very passionate about, you know, what their work and not just the, sure. not just the, the pieces themselves, but the story behind them and right. where they, the, the history and where they come from. And, um, and so, you know, 
um, it's important to, to protect that for many generations to come. And I, and I get that. So we're Casey Art Lounge. So what, what are you drinking tonight after you finish this? <laughs> oh, right now you're drinking LaCroix. I'm Wonderful. drinking LaCroix, LaCroix at the moment, but I will probably have a nice glass of rose after that this. Sounds rose. great. Rosé all day. <laughs> Rosé all day. So before we leave, I just want to remind you also of an event that's this uh, 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 Saturday night from 6.30 to 8.30. Polly Alice McCann, who you all know, is going to be at Homer's Coffee Shop in Overland Park. And she's, first of all, she has a lot of her art there. So that's going to be fun. And it's going to be a poetry reading also. So Polly will be reading her poetry, Keevan. Um, Callahan is also a poet. He'll be reading some of his things. It'll just be a fun, informal time to sit around and uh, hang out with poets and artists and drink great coffee in a great little community coffee shop. So Saturday night from 6.30 to 8.30. So Carnes, thanks a ton. Thank you, Jan. Look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.